Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this daily Hindu analysis video. In the morning, these videos, videos come. In the evening, the PIP videos come. Both are important. Both are having a different uh, set of data. So uh, follow all these uh, lessons. Follow all the data, all the MCQs that I give to you. And PDF you will get on the Telegram channel and on my Facebook group. And I have also created my uh, Telegram channel. So 11th of March, Monday it is some important data. Before that, sacrifice, giving up something that matters for something that matters more set your priorities and one thing one word if somebody would uh, ask that uh, you should uh, learn to get the success that is sacrifice learn making sacrifices without sacrifice you can never become confident and you uh, cannot uh, win the situation because you need to pay some price for that and sacrifice is that price for your success okay and these are the pen drive courses and uh, you can a call on these numbers and uh, UPSC course is also launched and uh, these are important extremely important at this particular time so uh, MCQs that I gave to you yesterday Andaman Nicobar Islands Baratang is there mud volcanoes are also very famous in uh, Andaman Nicobar Islands and this statement this third option is wrong India's own only volcano it is India's only active volcano is the barren island okay India has many volcanoes but all are extinct okay Active volcano is there in the barren island. So that is why this uh, particular statement is wrong. So one and two is the correct answer here. CSIR National Physical Laboratory. It is managing the uh, Indian standard time situation. You see the longitude is 82.5 degree east longitude. And uh, India's longitudinal stretch west to east is too much. There is two hours of difference in uh, the timing of uh, Arunachal Pradesh and in the Gujarat's timing. So uh, the, it is demanded that more than one time zones should be there in India. But uh, still we are following one and Indian standard time is according to this 82.5 which is going through Mirzapur near Varanasi. And uh, CSIR NPL is ha having this responsibility. NPL's headquarter is in New Delhi not in Mumbai. So only one is the correct answer here. Next forest principle certainly they were, uh, they were adopted after 1992 Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro Brazil. And uh, important is that this statement is wrong because it says binding authoritative statement it is non-binding okay it is non-binding and it is uh, regarding or uh, conservation of all types of forest and their management and the consensus regarding that so uh, this statement would be wrong and this is right so only two is the correct answer here next these are the words that i found and uh, try them into sentences next our uh, schedule for the elections that is uh, uh, open now and it is launched and uh, Sunil Arora as CEC he announced this and uh, it is it is going to be there in seven phases it will start on 11th of April and it will end by I think 19th of May 23rd of May is the result date and you see by this announcement model code of conduct it has come into effect and it will start uh, from yesterday and it will go till 23rd of May on, till the uh, result announcement date. So in this model code of conduct, it was started way back in 1960 in the state of Kerala. And uh, after that in 1962 in Lok Sabha elections, we have been uh, following it. And uh, you see, this is a convention. This is not given in the constitution, not given in the constitution. Remember this, it is not a statutory provision. It was uh, uh, started in 1962 and we have been following it many restrictions are uh, imposed during this uh, uh, application of a model code of conduct and uh, uh, these ministers and all they cannot use official vehicles and all for their election campaigning they cannot mix their official widgets with the election campaigning and they would allow uh, similar opportunities uh, in giving some clearance or allowances in in these uh, playgrounds and all for these rallies and all so all these opportunities would be equal and this should be a level playing field for all the parties that is the main aim here and no new recruitment process can be started in this particular time so model code of conduct which is called achar sahita in hindi that is extremely important next we are going to talk about these articles in a brief we are going to discuss this article and uh, this is a very important one we are going to discuss this and we are not going to discuss this particular article. This is a political one and a resolution at last. It is regarding the IBC and NC uh, National Company Law Tribunal. So NCLT, we will discuss this important for GS paper 3. This is important for GS paper 1 and 
टू बोथ एंड दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर जी एस पेपर टू एंड थ्री यू मे से एंड वी आर नॉट गोना डिस्कस दिस पोलिटिकल वन इन दिस आर्टिकल द राइटर से इज दैट वट एवर द हिंदू हैज बीन डूइंग इन द टर्म्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेटिव जर्नलिज्म एंड द डॉक्यूमेंट्स दैट इट रिलीज इन न्यूज पेपर रिगार्डिंग द डिफेंस मिनिस्ट्रीज डेटा सो द राइटर से इज नाउ वी हैव एक्चुअली एक्सपोज दीज पीपल एंड वी प्रोड्यूस्ड दीज पर्टिकुलर डेटा इन द पब्लिक डोमेन सो दिस इज नॉट एनी काइंड ऑफ स्टीलिंग एंड इवन इन दिस नाइनटीन सेवेंटी थ्री केस ऑफ पूरन मल सुप्रीम कोर्ट एक्सेप्टेड दिस थिंग दैट इंटेंट इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट सोर्स ऑफ द इंफॉर्मेशन इज नॉट इंपॉर्टेंट इफ इट इज ब्रिंगिंग एनी काइंड ऑफ बेनिफिट टू पब्लिक एट लार्ज एंड इफ मे बी इट इज स्टोरन फ्रॉम समवेयर और समथिंग लाइक दैट दैट इज एडमिसेबल बिकॉज इट इज डूइंग अ ग्रेटर गुड टू द सोसाइटी एंड इन द डेमोक्रेसी दीज थिंग्स आर मच मोर इंपॉर्टेंट सो द सोर्स इज नॉट गोना बी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज ही इज एक्सप्लेनिंग दीज थिंग्स इन दिस वे बिकॉज गवर्नमेंट इज नाउ प्रपोजिंग ऑफिशियल सीक्रेट्स एक्ट अगेंस्ट द हिंदू बिकॉज ऑफ दे रिलीज दीज डेटाज एक्चुअली दिस ऑफिशियल सीक्रेट्स एक्ट इज अ कलोनियल uh act and britishers they used it against indian uh, press and the newspapers and all where they were exposing their policies they were exposing their wrong deeds so official secrets act was imposed by britishers on indians so uh, that is a kind of a uh, uh, very uh, inappropriate legacy that we are carrying till now so it is under a lot of criticism and applying the official secrets act against the hindu is uh, uh, really a problematic situation because these all things were done under investigative journalism in a way uh, snowden edward snowden talked about uh, the iraq brutalities by america and uh, vietnam wars uh, panama papers all these things they were open because of the investigative journalism so the source cannot be revealed be these people they do a really a brave task they risk their lives because many people many powerful people they are exposed in these so they there may be a threat to their lives so this thing is really really brave so uh, the uh, the hindu says that it is nowhere less than the bravery of soldiers because it is in favor of democracy it is to uh, make the democracy strong and exposing these uh, scams and ex- exposing uh, some kind of uh, uh, wrong deals or some kind of corruption that is actually vital for the democracy so that is why uh, this should not be imposed on the hindu this is the thing the writer says it is giving uh, many examples uh, uh, from abroad that many writers uh, they have done things like that and these are actually for the benefit of public at large so that's important now in this particular article you see many things are repeated one something that is important that we are going to discuss that happy mon jacob is the same person who said about the air strike is an is an option on 19th, 19th of february he said air strikes are option but there may be a possibility that our pilot would be captured and the same thing happened so uh, his article becomes important and he says that uh, politicizing terrorism actually it is only in the talks and all these uh, media people uh, the spokes persons of these political parties and all these people they say this thing but they just repeat these lines that this should not not be politicized and in the very next line they start politicizing the matter and you see the extreme level of politicization of this matter we have seen when supreme court openly has to ban this activity that you cannot use soldiers pictures on your campaigning walls so so dirty this thing has become and mainly this is done by the ruling party where uh, many people from the party they are taking advantage of this thing and uh, they are actually politicizing it very heavily they have the posters of these uh, martyrs on their uh, campaigning walls and all and uh, even they have picture of uh, the abhinandan uh, captain abhinandan also pilot abhinandan also so after that supreme court has to intervene in this matter and he said that don't politicize this matter and you cannot use these pictures so this is the level of a politicization so he says that democracy in the democracy questions would be asked but you see out of these uh, uh, data's like 400 300 people are killed in the balakot strike and all after that it all started 
and this is how the politicization started with this matter before that not many people were talking about it but after that all were uh, uh, asking these questions that uh, what is the source and after that in the international media we did not give any kind of number in the official uh, uh, press release also we said that we have not counted any kind of numbers but many people are killed many uh, these uh, terrorists and their camps they are attacked uh, but we cannot give you any kind of a number we are assessing the number so this is the thing and this is how the suspicion comes in the democracy in this time where elections are not far away they are just uh, two months away and now the notif notification is also out so that is why these questions are necessary these questions would not have been necessary if nothing uh, would have been there in the media and these people they would not have been given any kind of numbers or something like that but after this extreme level of politicization and demanding of votes by showing these posters that raises many suspicions and that is why these questions these become necessary in the democracy and you see finding the root cause of the problems is very necessary because you see we need to uh, differentiate between the war and the terror act this was the terror act this was a very uh, cowardice act uh, it is sponsored by Pakistan that we all know but it was not it was not an official declaration of the war but the actual war mongering was there if Pakistan openly would have uh, and uh, it would have uh, dared us for the war then these war mongering on the social media and the, in this uh, these uh, prime time news debates those would have been obvious those would have been legitimate but without declaration of war without uh, somebody daring us openly that was a provocation that was not a daring that was a provocation and that was a cowardice act so if there would have been a daring then these uh, bolstering these emotions would have been necessary but this is the time to think this is the time to uh, strategically making those uh, devising those uh, particular ways where we can attack these terrorist groups and certainly we would pressurize Pakistan for that but in the pressure uh, these strikes became uh, very much necessary and after that uh, some kind of embarrassment according to some writers that was there when our pilot was captured but you see after that what is happening after that are we following the issue in the media in the same with the same fervor no everything is shifted towards politics now they are no more talking like that the way they were talking before the pilots uh, returning at that time they uh, make made this thing like that nothing is there existing in this world but right now these things are gone from the media debates so these things are giving suspicions and this is how we are not reaching up to the roots because after returning uh, of Abhinandan the task is not completed still we need to do all these things which were necessary but the follow-up is totally shifted towards the political campaigning and these elections and their announcement so hardly people are going to talk about these things but certainly they are going to take advantage of the uh, politicization of this particular matter so that is why questions are uh, necessary and you see saying that do not politicize also means do not ask difficult questions so this is the thing writer uh, is saying and he says that there are different ways political and military wise and there are no military solutions of any kind of war attacks happen after that counter attacks happen and again attacks happen many lives are lost and in the end they all come to table for these political uh, solutions so political resolutions are the ultimate issue disturbance was there in the valley in 2010 and at that time government what it did it sent a team of interlocutors to talk to protesting Kashmiris and after that that was the most stable phase uh, from 2010 to 2013 it was the most stable phase in Kashmir's history after 1990s it was said and uh, this was because of this uh, sending of this interlocutors team to the protesters but that did not happen so the writer says we need these kind of solutions okay so that is the thing next it is regarding the resolution that is late but somehow it became possible SR steel that was in trouble that was in docks and it could not uh, pay any kind of uh, uh, these installments of loans and all so now Arcelor Mittal 
आर्सेलर मित्तल हैज approved this bid and uh, they have bought sr steels all stakes and it is a 42000 crore rupees deal 42000 crore bid you see they uh, the demand was actual demand was uh, around 55000 crore rupees but uh, this haircut the difference uh, between these things this is called haircut so this haircut is not uh, uh, achieved till now and it may become a problem but anyhow this is the biggest ever deal under ibc provisions and uh, which is handled by nclt national company law tribunal so nclt is important for us national company law uh, the and this uh, companies act 2013 it came in 2013 and under it the national company law tribunal was established and it's a quasi judicial body a quasi judicial body and uh, issues relating to indian companies it handles those cases and you see it also handles the cases which are coming under the ibc provisions what are the problems which are there under it and it also handles the cases of bifr according to sik industries companies act 1985 and it also take up cases which are pending before appellate authority of industrial and financial uh, reconstruction so all these things upsc may ask you that uh, which are the cases that nclt handles so nclt handles all these cases and uh, there is a principal bench in new delhi apart from that 12 other benches are there one uh, additional in the, is there in new delhi and uh, other 11 are there in these cities okay and you see uh, insolvency and bankruptcy code insolvency means when these companies or any kind of uh, person any entity if they are not able to repay these debts or loans so they become insolvent it's a financial term bankruptcy it's a legal term meaning is same but bankruptcy is a legal term and this ibc uh, it came in 2016 it was passed in parliament in may 16 and it was effective in december 2016 and it replaced these particular acts so this is regarding these companies it came after this uh, issue which became so huge the twin balance sheet issue where banks were in trouble because they gave loan loans to these companies and they did not uh, uh, repay it and that is why both were in trouble and after that many solutions uh, were devised and they were tried but most of them were a failure and this ibc became a important tool and now uh, some resolution is going on although many cases are pending but uh, this uh, sr deal is the biggest one till now under this ibc provisions in insolvency and bankruptcy code so they may ask you uh, some detailing regarding ibc and nclt nclt was established under the company companies act 2013 remember this next the flawed unit of academic quotas in this issue that the writer says the history of reservation in india it is a, a problematic one you see the first problem is of the indian society why caste is there why this uh, historical injustice was there that is the basic thing among all the issues related with the reservation but nobody wants to solve that issue because politics is there and politics run on runs on caste caste is the biggest factor and in the states more than 95% elections they are fought on the caste basis always these lobbies always these candidates always these uh, uh, parties they are following caste they are trying to pursue particular caste groups so that is why it is not ending and they are nowhere in mood to solve this issue permanently in the constitution this provision was there inter caste marriages uh, became possible and that was almost impossible if this provision would not have been there in our society but due to politics it is continuing and caste is still a big factor and because of caste in the constitution they had to bring these reservation issue but after that the continue uh, the continuance of this particular uh, issue of reservation that was only for 10 years but after that it continued uh, that was also because of the politics and you see some logical things remain there and which are problematic and the reality of society that is totally different from th that particular logic so there is a particular dile dilemma we can see 
and we can understand this particular dilemma by these data you see history of reservation in india even constitutional amendments were brought up to overturn some court rulings court rulings they were based on the logic okay and they were uh, actually rectifying some systematic problems but you see systematic problems are somewhat different from the social reality and the representation issue of the reserved categories so because of the under representation and because of these uh, political pressures amendments are always uh, brought in the parliament and they are turning overturning these supreme court rulings we have seen in the 77th constitutional amendment act of 1995 where this thing was reserved the uh, supreme court at that time decided that uh, scheduled caste and scheduled, scheduled tribe reservation is there but there cannot be any reservation in the promotion okay because it is distorting the system so we cannot allow this thing but this thing was reserved uh, reversed by the 77th amendment act why this was uh, reversed because according to the data social data what it says it says that they hardly uh, people are there on the higher post from the scst community so the representation is very very low and that is why the reservation in the promotion is also needed otherwise these people they are under some kind of a stress and pressure by the employees of uh, employees of uh, uh, general category because already they are targeted because they uh, had come there due to reservation and due to their quotas they could get the job and that is why some kind of a discrimination is always there and that is also seen that is also a reality but the logic says that uh, there should not be any kind of reservation in the promotion so that is why supreme court ordered this thing that there should not be reservation in the uh, in the promotion but this thing was reversed and it was not a small decision it was a nine judges bench decision in indra sani case where they also decided about the 50% capping on the reservation uh, limit and this thing was also solved but 77th amendment was brought up in 1995 and it reversed this in the same way 81st amendment came 85th amendment came and they changed these rulings by the supreme court and supreme court always decided according to the uh, system and its logic and the way system is going to work in efficient manner but the problem is very deep and the issue of under representation of these communities is also very real and it is also a reality that for their upliftment they need to be there on the higher posts presently uh, uh, their numbers are very less on the higher posts so both things are there both kinds of things are there and this is a perfect dilemma and you see supreme court and government they both find it very very difficult and mainly the government during the election time they are always pressurized by this so there can be innovative solutions certainly there can be innovative solutions and you i am giving you this main question that uh, give me some uh, suggestions here and give me a suggestion supporting the balance that the protection of the reserved category should also be there and the system should also be bolstered because it is not the condition that these people are not capable to reach up to those posts or they are not having the capability or they are not having the merit to reach up to those uh, places on the higher posts but certainly it is the issue of opportunity it is the issue of representation it is the issue of uh, confidence in the existence in the society because con confidence is a very major issue for the for these backward communities socially they are not much confident that is for sure maybe in some areas they are uh, living a life of prosperity but in most of the cases in uh, most part of india and mainly in the rural areas they are not living a confident life and that is why support is needed for them in the case of vhu where vivekanand tiwari a person uh, he actually went to court and he said that the notification that came in 2017 that should be quashed because the notification was following the same thing the same convention which uh, was being followed where university was a unit and the reservation and these seats were distributed according to that 13 point system where department is a unit 
that was not followed in the notification but he said that this should be followed and then court uh, evaluated this particular situation and the court said that according to the system's need and when we are following the uh, cadre service and all these rules then a department should be a unit because these uh, particular posts these particular cadres they cannot be replaced okay so this uh, uh, 13 point roster system should stay and department should be a unit but what happened after this you see there were 1930 faculty posts on 12 may 2017 but after following this uh, 13 point roster system after following department as a unit what changes were there you see when uh, normal rule was there where university was a unit 289 posts were there for the sc community after 13 point system it became 119 from 289 to 119 for sts uh, earlier there were 143 seats they came to 29 only from 143 to 29 and for OBCs, it was uh, 310 seats and it became 220 seats for OBCs after 13 point system. That means when the data says and the reality suggests that these people, they were having under representation in the existing system also and they needed much more representation than which is there in the present condition. But after adopting this uh, 13 point roster system, this issue became a huge problem. It was a bigger problem for them because instead of rising the seats, they actually decreased and you see the drastic uh, decrease is there from 143 to 29, from 289 to 119 and from 310 to 220. When people are already underrepresented and you are uh, uh, actually uh, decreasing the reserved seats then it would be a real problem in the society and for these people and certainly they, they are going to protest about it so first supreme court uh, gave this decision in the favor of 13 point system and after that government now uh, has got up the ordinance overturning this particular supreme court order and now the uh, prevailing system of uh, 200 uh, uh, seats and a university as a unit that would follow okay so 13 point system is no more there so this happened in the case of uh, scst act also where supreme court decided against uh, these communities and then government brought the status quo back again with the ordinance and in this case also where 13 point system was supported by supreme court and government again brought up this ordinance and the status quo remained in both the cases status quo remained okay first the uh, problem came from supreme court and then government supported these people so it is said that it may be a, a political tactics also because in the election time now uh, all these people from the dalit communities and all these uh, reserved categories they are going to support heavily the government because government has brought up this ordinance and uh, 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 this thing is going to not going to be problematic for them because 13 point system is ended now so this, this these are the issues and these are unsolved issues because you see logic one side there is logic one side there is need and which way we should move according to the uh, universal standard we should support logic and we should support supreme court's ruling but according to the poor condition of these reserved categories we had to overturn the decision so the writer says that this particular move by the government by uh, bringing this ordinance that is a welcome move but much more innovation much more solutions are needed here okay so that is the thing and uh, by bringing this 13 point system it was actually going towards ending the reservation and because the numbers are showing everything out of 26 62 reserved post they were according to the previous system where university was a unit but when department became a unit under 13 13 point roster system from 2662 to 1241 this was the number for the reserve seats so it was a drastic decrease here and this is how 
they say they said that uh, this is how by bringing this 13 point system they these are the steps to end this reservation system so it is going to be uh, very problematic for the reserved groups that that is the message of this particular article next uh, that uh, this particular article I have explained to you because uh, it, it was the same issue when I was saying that 1973 Puranmal case in this case of Supreme Court Supreme Court said that intent is important source is not important for the information when the Hindu had uh, submitted these uh, data and they uh, revealed these data they published these data in their newspaper so it was in the public domain they it you cannot say that they stole it from somewhere okay because stealing is something uh, when you steal something and you uh, keep it with yourself and you take advantage of it. But here they published it in the public domain and it was vital for the democracy to release this information where some kind of irregularities they found. So it should have come into public domain and that is the case. So here uh, they are quoting the Supreme Court's judgment. Next Sukhoi uh, 30's case you see instead of Sukhoi 30. We deployed MiG-21 in this uh, skirmish between India and Pakistan airstrikes. And what was the reason? The reason was that blast pens were not there with the Sukhoi 30. Blast pens are needed to make it secure from the missile attacks. Okay. And that was not there uh, with these planes. These are old planes. We have taken it from uh, USSR uh, in... in uh, I think it was 1980s or uh, 70s. Uh, sorry, it was 1996 when we got the first batch of Sukhoi 30 from Russia. But you see, in the original deal, uh, the blast pens were not there. But in 2013, uh, they decided about it and they said that uh, they should be there. But this thing was not cleared till December uh, 2016. And because of this delay, we could not deploy Sukhoi 30 there near the border and we had to wait for this and now it is going to take three to four years to uh, integrate these things into these planes so this is another example of the delaying of these uh, procurements procedures and uh, some problems which are there uh, as a red tape measures in the system and certainly they are problematic in these kind of times in these kind of uh, events where we needed the availability the ready availability of these planes but they were not ready for this next very unfortunate incident happened with the ethiopian 737 boeing plane it was manufactured by america and uh, even the pilot said that there is a problem some problem with uh, is there with the plane and uh, he demanded to go back uh, to the air station but uh, they did not allow it and after that it crashed and all 157 people they were dead so that was very very unfortunate and uh, you see many incidents uh, are there and every year many uh, lives are lost in these air crashes globally and this is not a national phenomenon globally these things are happening these are happening with every country and this is a very problematic thing we need much more research in the airlines industry and now India has invited Saudi Arabia to invest in the strategic oil storage. You see in the emergency time when uh, any other country is not ready to give us these uh, crude oil and all. So we have our own uh, strategic reserves. Right now they are there in Vishakhapatnam, Mangalore and Padur. These three important cities and additional which are proposed near Padur, uh, Chandikhol, Odisha, Bikan, Rajasthan and Rajkot, Gujarat. So there they are going to create them. Okay, in these uh, underground mines and all, this is going to be stored. And we have 13 days of storage and 90 days storage is actually recommended by the International Energy Agency. So this can be a very important question in the prelims examination that right now we have 13 days of storage and we need to move towards 90 days. And three existing locations are there and proposed ones are here. Next. These are the MCQs. Try their answers in the comment section and I'm giving you a map question also. Find out all these uh, uh, lakes in the uh, continent of Africa and uh, learn about the Great Rift Valley system of Africa. Great Rift system you, you may also call it and uh, how this is developing and how they are going to tackle this situation because it's a huge issue and many countries are affected by this 
and uh, it is not uh, something that that is going to happen within one two three four years it will take thousands of years of time but some things are really changing with these countries so this is a very important question in geography great rift system of africa where africa's horn is actually diverging from the mainland of africa and this important question pdf uh, you will get on my telegram channel on the uh, telegram uh, channel of study iq also and on the facebook group of mine which is there here okay so here you will also get the link of a uh, telegram channel of mine on this particular group thanks a lot keep watching it was amazing